Good morning, folks. After a number of eruptive events the day before, we're seeing a calmer sun the last 24 hours. My eyes are on the incoming plasma filaments as well as the sunspots. The flaring stayed in C range, and the sunspot situation is just now showing signs of changing the script. It's not the currently facing sunspots that are doing it, though they are magnetically simple and small. They do present negative umbras leading on the north and south, a very rare situation. I'll do a deeper look episode today explaining why that happened and what things are supposed to look like. The sunspot that could change the lower flaring soon is just now incoming on the south. Solar wind is still calming, but we are seeing some of those anomalous readings as the weaker stream set back in and the sputter events send telemetry all over the place. The weakening stream in general has our shield and near-Earth energy relatively stable, but the sputter events are an issue for the satellite environment and the magnetic pulsations of the planet itself. Minor quake factor. It adds to the planetary geometry of Mars and the Sun coming together now. Sprinkle on top an earth-facing coronal hull, even if it only has moderate power, and that's a recipe for a quake uptick. We had one in Chile east of yesterday's signal on the Pacific Ridge, and a swarm uptick in Japan that is cracking up into six range on the full list. Coming back to space weather, we saw NASA believe the CME was heading our way, and now NOAA's Enlil spiral is updated and confirms an impact late tonight or early tomorrow. Should be minor though. We've also seen fairly wild cosmic ray fluctuations for 36 straight hours now. If you're looking at the sun from Earth, the flux is coming from slightly to the right and way, way north. Top news articles today include the ESO analysis of a butterfly nebula forming from a dying star. Interesting video and article linked for you below. We also have new images from Dawn at Ceres, closest images yet of the lights. Still no explanation for their existence. NASA's Earth observatories capturing wildfire smoke from Canada drifting south across the Midwest. If your sky looks a bit hazed out here, that's the reason for it. Last but not least, I did wait days after the new climate data to speak because I wanted every side of the story and the responses to them. Last night's upload is the summary and it is linked for you right below this video. We're watching weather as well with the cyclone standing offshore taunting the Middle East. Please weaken quickly. While no weakening potential exists over here, this is strengthening fast and will be a hurricane by the time it reaches the coastline. The convergence lines have been beastly, even reaching up to torment Toronto yesterday. And it continues today as heat and moisture prepare to meet cool dry air and work out an equilibrium above our heads leaving energy and water to interact with the ground below. Eyes on your forecasts, folks. In Europe, we still have the northern system cutting at Scandinavia, but the system near Spain from yesterday has shifted north and strengthened. It's now the top alert for the area. Down under, the convergence south of Perth and the one cutting across to New Zealand are the primary concerns. They're carrying the cloud line while a small and insignificant cloud mass still lingers on the land. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. Scroll down and get your click on. Lots to see today. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.